Hello and welcome to Tao Capes, the podcast that covers film, television, comics, and games. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Heal. What's up, guys? Just a reminder, the video version of today's episode is available on YouTube. If you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Today, we're ranking our most anticipated films of 2024 and discussing Merry Little Batman. All right, Todd, based on our list, what is your least anticipated film of 2024? Uh, my movie at number 20 is a Ballerina. I'm not much on musicals or tap dancing or any of that type of and stuff. And it's not about that at all. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Ballerina is uh, the first spinoff of the John Wick universe. Oh, I probably okay. should have been clear in my list of, uh, <laughs> of what the movie was. But yeah, Ballerina is, uh, is the first spinoff of the John Wick universe. Oh, so no Nutcracker Sweet. <laughs> no, okay, so, this no. is not Black Swan 2, though. Okay. This, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is Ballerina, like I said, John Wick spinoff. Uh, I have it myself. I've watched John Wick 1, and I've watched half of John Wick 2. It's just a franchise that kind of escaped me at the time. You hear good stuff. Right. I love Keanu Reeves. Uh, Ballerina, unless I catch up, probably not something I'm seeing right off. Yeah, I think I'm safe at keeping it at this spot, too. I think I'm current up through John Wick 3, but I haven't watched 4. Um, for me, it, it does rank higher on my list because, uh, you know, the bottom of my list uh, starting here, my number 20 is populated by uh, a spum film, Todd. We love <laughs> we love some spum, don't the we? Spum verse. Uh, my number 20 is Madam Web. Ah. Yeah, it was a tough choice here, but my number 20 goes to Madam Web. Just looks like nothing to me. Yeah. Just doesn't really have any interesting interesting uh, factors at all for me. So I can't fault it, you on it, that choice. It takes my number 20. What's your number 19? Uh, number 19, I have Argyle. <laughs> wow, okay. Lower than I thought. So why, yeah. why Argyle down I so low? Just, uh, just something about that crazy looking cat. Reminds me of the Flash. I don't want to be reminded of the Flash. And I'm the, just kidding. And the dog in the Flash. Yeah, yeah the CGI it, it, dog. It's not all that though. It's just uh, it seems like an interesting premise here, and I may have it a little bit too low, but I just don't really have any kind of anticipation for this flick. Okay. Uh, my number nineteen. We're staying with Spawn. Mine is Craven the Hunter. Oh. Now this one. I gave it a little bit higher over Madam Well because I think there's going to be a, a more of an ability for me to make fun of it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then Madam Web. I think Madam Web is just like a nothing. I think Craven the Hunter, friend of animals, might give me a little bit more comedic gold. You're going to have some stuff to mine from here. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Content wise. All right, what's your 18? Uh, at 18, I put The Fall Guy. Okay. I'm assuming here that this is based on the old TV series, The Fall Guy. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I just know it's a, uh, it's a Ryan Gosling joint. And he plays uh, a stuntman, I think. That's the old TV series That's, premise, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's kind of tasked with going out and rescuing the, the star of the film or something like that. That's been, like, kidnapped or captured or something. And he's the only guy, because he's a stunt guy, that can go and get him back, something right. like that. Maybe good. I mean, uh, there have been some decent, you know, t movies based off old TV shows. But uh, we'll right. see. Right. Uh, my number 18, rounding off the spum, Todd, Venom 3. Ah, my 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 you got lowest your spum verse way down there. all the way down. <laughs> I do not care about any of these Venom three. There's 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 probably going to be you know there's some other controversial things that people might rank uh you know below some of my spum picks, but I just I don't give a shit about the sp I don't give a shit about <laughs> spum. Venom three is it, I would say is probably the the best of the worst in a way, right? Because uh, I mean at least I got Tom Hardy. Uh, I like Tom Hardy, but other than that, I have. I don't care about this film at all. Gotcha. What's 17, Todd? Uh, 17, I have uh, Mickey 17, because I didn't really like Mickey Mouse's other 16 movies. So Again, I uh, figure this 17th film ain't going to be hitting on a whole lot. Should have been clear about uh, this film <laughs> I'm as wrong well. again? What? Mickey, uh, Mickey 17 is a, is a Robert Pattinson film. Oh. Uh, I believe it's by the director of Parasite, which won the, uh, okay. the Best Picture Oscar a few years back. Uh, it's, one of, it's one on my film. It rates a lot uh, higher on my list. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, Pattinson is some type of, 
uh, he gets he somehow like gets resurrected, lives for so long, comes back somehow. It's like a science fiction type film. There's like a, a very like small teaser trailer out for it. Okay. But just with Pattinson and with that uh, with that director, like I love Parasite. Parasite was fantastic. So it uh, it was just something that stuck out to me. But it, not not a Mickey Mouse film. Oopsie, Todd Goof. Uh, <laughs> my number seventeen is Bad Boys Four. Okay. Yeah, I'm sick of Will Smith. Gotcha. All together. I'm sick of hit him personally, you know, and, and uh, publicly getting cuckolded by his wife every five minutes. <laughs> uh, she obviously wanted to marry Tupac. Right. <laughs> you know, and she hates his fucking guts. Oh, well, yeah. And I'm sick of that drama. That whole thing. I'm sick of it. Okay. I'm sick of the Smith family in general. I got Jaden, you. Willow, <laughs> all of them. They can fuck right off, and especially Jada. Okay. Uh, I'm done with I'm done with the Bad Boys franchise. Bad Boys 3 sucked. <laughs> I love the original Bad Boys. Right. Not going to lie. The original Michael Bay Bad Boys, and even most of Bad Boys 2. Right. But, I mean, Bad Boys, from like, in 95, when they come out, I was all over that movie. I was five years old. I still I saw it at the drive-in. Yeah. I had it on VHS. I watched it over and over and over. Big fan of the original Bad Boys. But at this point, they can fuck right off. <laughs> uh, 16, Todd. Uh, 16, I have my first spum entry. Okay. It is my spot for Craven the Hunter. Oh. You'd rather <laughs> see Madam Webb than Craven, huh? I guess. Okay. I mean, uh, they're right there close together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number 16 is Gladiator 2, because w- why? Ah, Why? Right. Why? I think I heard Denzel Washington's in this one. Okay. Uh, Ridley Scott's back, but again, what's the point? Why? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Gladiator One is such a great film. Do we need a second? Is there no. more? To, is there more to say about anything? No. I mean, I'm sure it won't be the same. Maybe not even the same setting. I'm sure it won't follow the same characters. But this seems like a cash grab to me. Yeah, definitely. This, yeah, definitely. seems like a cash grab. Uh, Fifteen, Todd. Uh, 15 is my spot for Madam Web. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Web for you goes right above Craven, huh? It's kind of a pick your poison right there. Exactly. Exactly. My 15 goes to Ballerina. Okay. Um, like I said, I mean, uh, the John Wick films seem to be, you know, pretty, con- you know, continuously pretty good. Maybe if I catch up, but I mean, I would have more interest in sitting down to watch it, I would say, than like a Gladiator 2 or a Bad Boys 4. So it gets my 15th spot. Uh, 14, Todd. Uh, my 14 spot goes to Gladiator 2. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're pretty in sync on that one. I mean, I just, what is there? What, what, why? Yeah, I mean, is what's the point? Other than the cash grab. Yeah, I mean. And we have, the notoriety of Ridley Scott's name. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Ridley, Ridley re, in recent years, uh, I don't know. He's been swinging and missing a lot for me. Yeah, there has been a few. Just House of Gucci. I mean, I don't, I don't know how Napoleon's being received, but I've, I've heard some stuff about it. Just Joaquin Phoenix being Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people uh, historical inaccuracies. I'll put it, yeah, that, put it yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, to me, it doesn't rate that high for me either. Uh, what we on fourteen? Uh, uh, a Quiet Place Day One for me. Uh, I've seen the original Quiet Place. Really enjoyed it. Didn't see the sequel. Hear good things. Uh, Killian Murphy in the film. Hear really good stuff about it. Uh, I think this is a prequel, obviously, by the day one. Um, Again, it just rates higher. I am more familiar with that universe than I am some of the other things, so that's why it takes my 14th spot. Uh, What about your 13th, Todd? Uh, 13, I have my last spum entry. That would be Venom 3. (laughs) Okay. Have you seen Venom and Venom 2? I can't remember if we talked about Uh, that. It's been a while, but I've saw the first two, yeah. Woody Harrelson. Yeah, he was in it. Yeah, it's it's not going to be good (laughs) for me. Uh, My number 13th is The Fall Guy, mostly just because I like Ryan Gosling. Gotcha. Don't know anything about it. Never saw their original TV show. I know the premise, and I like Ryan Gosling, so I got my number 13. Gotcha. Uh, what's your number 12? Uh, my 12 is a Quiet Place Day 1. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Have you seen any of the Quiet Place films? I have not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, let's see. My number 12 is Twisters. Okay. I did not know this was a thing. Is this a sequel to Twister? It, it's supposed it's in that universe. I okay. don't know if it's going to be a prequel. I don't know if it's going to be a sequel, a soft reboot. I don't know what okay. it's going to be. Um, I think they're saying sequel, okay. a spiritual sequel. Uh, I really like the original Twister. Oh yeah. Um, uh, it's it's one of those that like uh, I haven't watched it in a long time. I need to go back and revisit. But I mean, 
I like the premise. So even if it's not, even if it's just doing its own thing and it's just, you know, that, that same kind of film and, and the same kind of spirit of it, I'm willing to give it a shot compared to some of this other stuff. Again, I don't I don't know if there's any casting or anything else. Maybe it won't even ever take off or be take off, you know, and right. even come out. But eh, it's kind of interesting to me compared to some of this other stuff. I have a personal little uh, little <laughs> life fact about the first Twister movie. It actually cost me a surround sound speaker. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. I was like, should I bring that up? Did I, should I bring up when Todd played Twister and rattled his surround sound off the wall? Now, this was back in the day, you know, when it was all corded, you know, and that thing yeah. was wireless, and I had them right there just on little shelves, and Twister got so loud it vibrated one of them speakers right off the shelf, and he busted the floor. A mark, <laughs> a mark of a good film if I've ever heard one. Uh, what's your number 11, Todd? Uh, number 11, uh, a little bit higher than you, but I had Bad Boys 4. <laughs> all right. Tell, tell These me. remain kind of a guilty pleasure series for me. Yeah. Diminishing returns, obviously, throughout as we go along, but I'm still kind of, I'm down for Bad Boys 4. We'll I see. I got you. I got you. Uh, my number 11, uh, I give to Beetlejuice 2. Uh, I don't, it's one of those films that I, I don't, I don't need to go back to Beetlejuice. Right. I don't need to see more. It runs a risk of ruining what we already have. Exactly. Um, but it's, it, I rank it 11 just because I like Michael Keaton. That's really, I like the character of Beetlejuice. I'm hoping they can pull something decent out here. Right. We'll see. So I give it my 11th spot. Okay. All right, top 10, Ty. What's your number 10? All right, my number 10 spot, I have Nosferatu. Okay. Uh, so I put this on the list. Uh, this is uh, Robert Eggers' Nos- uh, Nosferatu. Uh, I did The Lighthouse, uh, The Northman, I think. Uh, the the concept, obviously, you know, uh, the original Nosferatu I think it was like a silent film, right? It was, yeah. I'm interested to see what he does with uh, the material. I'm, I'm interested to see what he d- would do with a nice Ratu film. So it ranks a little higher on my list, but nice to see it number 10 on yours at least. Uh, my number 10 goes to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Okay. Um, you know, Ghostbusters Afterlife, it was okay. Right. Uh, it was a little bit more of that, like, I don't, uh, you know, do, again, do we need to go back to Ghostbusters? I didn't really. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of that, like, it kind of wanted to do its own thing until the last 30 minutes, and it's like, well, we got to have the legacy We got to have the legacy <laughs> characters to come out here and, like, you know, collect their paycheck and look like they're on their deathbeds <laughs> and could not give two fucks, if, especially if you're Bill Murray, about being here. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it was still good, but it was just, it was a lot of like, all right, we're doing our own thing. And they're like, no, 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 uh, we're panicking and we got to have, uh, you know, Gozer and uh, the Keymaster and all this kind of like, we got to, things you know, member berries. Like, it was a lot of that. Right, right. Towards the end, you know, oh, yeah. here's uh, whatever the uh, the uh, the toy from the Ghostbusters TV show was, whatever that ghost was called. I can't even remember his name. Slimer? Not not Slimer. It was the other one that was in the TV the TV series. You know, it was like the other different one. Muncher. Oh, is it yeah. Muncher? I think you're right. Something yeah. like that. But yeah, I don't know. It was just a lot of member berries and stuff for me. But I rank it as number ten. Uh, what is your number nine, Todd? Uh, my number nine is Twisters. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you think about a potential Twister sequel? You know, as we mentioned earlier, I, I really enjoyed the original Twister. And it's probably one of my guilty pleasure movies. I'll, I'll, but uh, we'll see. I mean, has it been too long to go back and revisit that universe? Yeah, I mean, you I, I kind of, you know, I don't know, maybe it's the next generation. Is it uh, Bill Paxton, Helen Hunt's children or something oh, like that? Oh, yeah, you how know? are they going to play that off? I, yeah, I mean, it could be. You Helen know, Hunt going to make an appearance. Maybe. She's like the old lady. Like, I saw a twister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lifted a whole barn off top of me, you know, kind of thing. Right. R.I.P. Bill Paxton. Yeah. Miss you, Bill Paxton. Uh, my number nine, Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. Um I have more of an interest in seeing it over something like Ghostbusters just for that kind of like potential comedy factor. And it's become that the the legendary pictures Godzilla universe has become sort of that guilty pleasure now. Right. It's a little too funny and crazy and quirky. Over the top. Over the top now. You know, obviously, you know, Godzilla's outrunning Kong now and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, there's still like a guilty pleasure factor to it. So that's why it gets my nine spot. Uh, your eight spot, Todd. Uh, my eight is uh, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. All right, yeah, we talked about that last week a little bit. Definitely interested. Um, little, I, my worry was a little too much CGI, maybe yeah. to, compared to something like Fury Road, which is a lot of practical effects. But you know, we'll see. 
like Anya Taylor Joy. So yeah. we'll, we'll see what it's got for us. Uh, my number eight uh, is Argyle. Okay. I have mine. Okay. I was surprised you had it so low. Right. I have it. I do have the same kind of worries. It does, you know, the 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 cat, the CGI cat. It does worry me and stuff. I like Matthew Bond films. They always like deliver, you know, good visuals. There's usually some really neat fight scenes. Usually pretty violent. You know, right. like the Kingsman. Those kind of things kick ass. I'm a big fan of Matthew Vaughn, so that's why it rates so highly. I'm hoping Henry Cavill's not just in it for five minutes and goes away. You know, right. that kind of thing. Right. I hope he's in it more than I. I I worry that he's in it. But for me, it looks pretty interesting. I think it's coming out in February, so it's out here pretty soon. So it gets my number eight spot. Gotcha. What's your number seven? Uh, Seven, I have uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Okay. So uh, why Ghostbusters up in the higher top ten? Almost cracking the top five. Not quite, but. I just like, I don't know. (laughs) Is it Paul Rudd? Well, you know, I I, I like Paul Rudd. Right. Looks like he's going to be suiting up in this one, but. uh, you know, maybe it's just uh, the Frozen Empire. <laughs> Who are they going to be battling? Right. I mean, yeah, I hope this one does its own thing. Like, I hope it starts to, if this is going to continue to be a franchise, it needs to, to, to stand on its own and stop relying so much on, on the legacy characters. Yeah, the things that you know kind of stuff. Uh, my number seven, we already talked about it. My number seven is Nosferatu. Again, gotcha. Robert Eggers. I'm just interested to see what that is. Him playing around in kind of the horror genre at this point. I'm interested to see what goes on there. What's your number six, Todd? Uh, six, I have Dune Part Two. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even seen Dune Part One, so I'll cut you a yeah, little slack. I was getting ready to say I still got to go back up and watch Dune We're Part One. We're going to be covering that pretty <laughs> soon, I think, in the new year uh, before the next film comes out. Uh, but Dune Part Two is your number six. Number six. All right. I'll give it to you since you had not seen Part One. Uh, my number six, we talked about it already, Mickey 17. Just interested to see that the actor combination with that director of sci-fi, Robert Pattinson, I, I'm down. Gotcha. Uh, five, Todd. At five, I put Godzilla Kong, The New Empire. Okay. Because I'm on a Godzilla vibe right now. Yeah, Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla's kind of back in a big way right now. Minus one is it's terrific. If you haven't seen it, please go out and yeah, see it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've got some videos out. We've got a minus one uh, review and discussion out. We've also got Godzilla 1998 and 2014 Popcorn Mumbles out, so check those out as well. Uh, my number five is Furiosa. Okay. Mad Max Saga, again, a little concerned, but uh, George Miller, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, still cracks my top five. What's your number four, Todd? Uh, four, I have uh, Joker, Fale Adieu. I think this is the <laughs> first one we've matched up on. Okay. My number four is Joker, Fale Adieu <laughs> as well. You okay? You having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a strunk again. <laughs> Seems to happen almost weekly at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, liked original Joker, 2019's Joker. Thought it was pretty solid. Kind of surprising how good I liked it. Uh, won Joaquin Phoenix and Oscar. Yeah. One of the best performing DC films of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, from all appearances, you know, getting Lady Gaga in as Harleen. Um, hearing my new musical numbers. Hearing, you know. Concerned. I'm yeah, concerned. <laughs> slightly concerning. Um <laughs> You know, I don't know. I think it's, I think it just kind of lives in its own world. And I think if the filmmaking is as good as it is, I think it can survive a genre switch. I think so. This has never been or was never going to be an out and out like comic book Joker. Right. This was kind of like, what if Joker but Taxi Driver? You know, this is kind of what that is. And I think now it's like, what do we do with it? You know, let's take it in a different direction potentially. But yeah, I'm, uh, it, Joker 1 was, was good enough that it, it made pretty high on my list, too. Gotcha. What's your number three, Todd? Uh, three, I had uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. We match up again. Hey. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is my number three. I love Matt Reeves' trilogy of eight films. Uh, this is not Matt Reeves coming back, unfortunately, but it's uh, w- it's staying within that same universe. Seems like uh, a, you know lots of time has passed, though, since Caesar's reign. Uh, I'm interested to see what it looks like. Trailer looks pretty interesting. Uh, some of the CG, hope it a little bit, a little bit tweaks a little bit more. Right, right. Some of it's a little, little rubbery looking in parts, but definitely something I'm interested in. I mean, it's been um, a pretty good run for the Planet of the Apes yeah. films, coming off the back of like Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. So. Yeah, other than maybe I'll say that one hiccup. You know, I've enjoyed the Planet of the Apes series since the beginning, so I, don't, I really would like to see this. Yeah, one. Charlton Heston Planet of the Apes, absolute classic. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time since I watched it, but I love that film. I haven't. I can't say that I've seen all the sequels. You get. 
kind of crazy. Returns, beneath yeah. the Planet of the Apes, yeah. Return to the Planet of the Apes, and lots of Roddy McDowell <laughs> and, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, number three, we both agree, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, you're number two, Todd. I had this one way higher than you, and I got a little heat for this one, but Beetlejuice 2. <laughs> okay. All right. So tell me why Beetlejuice 2 goes all the way to your second. It's just that pairing of a... Uh, uh, Tim Burton and Michael Keaton again. I mean, I know they're a lot older, and, you know, I hope not. what they're going to do here is not going to diminish the returns of what they did years ago, but, you know, I'm just excited to see what they're going to do with Beetlejuice 2. Yeah, I mean, I do have a little bit of heat. I got I to gotta admit, I mean, like I said, I do always worry when we go back here, like, you know, are we, are we just doing it for the money, or do we, or do we have a really good original idea? Because that's, that's the difference to me. Doing something like a Gladiator 2 kind of sounds like a cash grab to me. Right. You know, Beetlejuice 2 could be a cash grab, but I hope I can I can back up sequels in the share universe, you know, like I can back up a movie like a Ghostbusters or a Beetlejuice 2 or another Star Wars film if you've got something original to say. Yeah. If you're going to take some of the, leg the legacy characters and the legacy elements, but you have something original, or you have something interesting to do with the characters or the story, I'm behind it. So hopefully it's more of that instead of just like Tim Timmy Burton needs a paycheck. Yeah. You know. If they're moving the franchise forward, you know, I'm all for it. If we're just leaning on the legacy of what came before, you know, it's going to, in my opinion, probably fail. Right. Uh, my number two is Deadpool 3. Okay. Um, it's the only Marvel film that we're getting next year, I think, as far as what, we, what we've seen before. Um, lots of set photos and things like that leaking right now. Obviously, Hugh Jackman is back. Looks like he's in the full Wolverine costume. I read an uh, article this week talking about that he's supposedly going to have a mask. And it's supposedly going to have the white eyelids as well. Oh, that's supposed to be very comic book accurate, right? Uh, so we'll see. That's just a, a, a report and a rumor that I that I'd read online. But uh, I mean, yeah, it looks interesting. I love the first two Deadpool's. I think they're still some of the best stuff that we've seen outside of like traditional MCU stuff. True. This is coming into the MCU the first time. It's supposed to going to have that R rating still. Uh, now with Brian Reynolds and the the crew able to kind of reference some of this MCU stuff, I hope they have some fun with some of the things that have went on in the world and maybe some of the, the real life stuff we've seen as well. But I'm looking forward to it. It's my number two. Sounds good. I figure I know what your number one is. Yeah, it is Deadpool 3. <laughs> exactly. So what's your thoughts on Deadpool 3? Uh, as you alluded to just a few minutes ago, uh, the first two Deadpool movies are, are great in my opinion. Uh, Ryan Reynolds just truly, totally redeems himself from the Green Lantern casting here. And uh, his... The X-Men Origins exactly. little hiccup he had. Uh, his Deadpool is awesome. Uh, you know, Wolverine, if supposedly in full costume with mask, with yep. white eyes. Yep. We keep hearing little drops of, you know, possible other MCU characters, Marvel characters going to be in this. Yep. Uh, I'm excited for it. And since it's our only Marvel drop for 2024, I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And it seems it. like in the greater MCU, it's going to have... It rumors are it's going to have more significance. It could play a significant factor in setting up where the MCU is going over the next few years into the, you know, potentially into secret wars and things like that. So I'm really interested to see what they do. Yeah. And it's just going to be something I think we can just kick back and relax and have some fun with, yeah. you know, and yeah. I, I'm down for that. For sure. Uh, my number one spot, if you haven't guessed it, goes to Dune part two. Okay. Uh, I had never seen the David Lynch Dune. I've never read the books. I love uh, the films of uh, Denis Villeneuve, who is the director. Uh, he did Arrival, Prisoners, which is a fantastic film. Uh, one of the most underrated films of all time, one of my favorite films of all time, Blade Runner 2049. Oh, yeah. Criminally underrated film. We will cover that one day for sure when I feel like I can eloquently talk about it enough as to – uh, convey, Do <laughs> convey how fantastic that that sequel is but uh uh i really love dune part one um i think he's saying uh, i just read an article the other day where Denis was saying that you know part one was kind of more that kind of political intrigue more story focused this is going to be more heavy kind of more of an action focus to it for part two i'm really interested to see what happens like i said i i know a little bit about the story where it goes just because of Pop culture osmosis. Obviously, Dune's been around for years, but it definitely takes my my top spot. I'm, I'm super, super excited, and we're getting it in a few months in March, and I can't wait. 
All right. Sounds good. All right, Ton. That's the films of 2025. Uh, if you guys are out there and listening, uh, you know, send us a comment, send us an email, tilecakespod at gmail.com. Yeah, what are let, you looking forward to? I'm exactly. <laughs> yeah, take these 20. Let us know what is your top uh, most anticipated films of 2024 as well. We'd love to hear from you. All right, Todd, it's now time to talk about Merry Little Batman. All right. Uh, spoilers are ahead. Damian Wayne must defend his home from the supervillains intent on destroying the holidays. Merry Little Batman was released on December 8, 2023 on Amazon Prime Video. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 94% and an audience score of 86%. So, Todd, where do you want to start off with Merry Little Batman? Uh, let's begin at... Uh... Todd's unwillingness to watch this movie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> let's look, let's begin with Todd. I added this in late. Originally, <laughs> we were just going to do the episode. We were going to have our news. We were going to have um, just the the ranking of our top you know films of 2024. I didn't know this was coming out this soon, so I was like, "Hey, I shot you a message. I'm like, hey, look, can we add Merry Little Batman in? Do you have enough time to watch this? Yeah, sure." And then uh, we, you come here today, you fell asleep last night watching Merry Little Batman. <laughs> right. I don't know if that's a comment on you or the film itself. That's more a comment on me, folks. I had a long day yesterday. Yeah, but to <laughs> to be fair, I did add this at the last minute for us to cover Merry Little Batman. But yeah. And it's unfair to the project to say I was unwilling to watch it. I was going to watch this. I didn't know it was going to be this soon. but uh, Or this long. Oh, this long. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> I was like, yeah, Cody, we'll watch it. What's, I thought I was thinking like, you, you know, 90 you, minutes. You literally message me and you're like, it's pretty short, right? Pretty and I'm short. like, no, it's 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised when I saw it yesterday. Right? I'm like, 90 fucking minutes. I was thinking like, you know, like a holiday special, like, like an hour, 30 minutes. I thought, you know, yeah, 30 to 40 minutes, honestly. Yeah. I thought kind of like, you know, 45 minutes-ish tops, maybe an hour. But, yeah, I was I was surprised it was a full, I guess they wanted that full-length feature-length uh, you know, kind of right. run time for it. And I know we had talked about it on an earlier podcast, you know, when I think the trailer for it had dropped, and I was just like, you know, hmm, skeptical. I don't want to be that guy yeah. to piss on this fire for everybody. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I I was kind of pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, we talked about it before on the, on the podcast previously, uh, I think, you know, when it kind of was first announced and you know it was one of those things you know we got to kind of remember not everything is made for us right not everything is made for 30 year old batman fans or 50 year old batman fans. right and this is one of those cases of like if this it may not be the best piece of batman media i've ever seen it may not be exclusively for me there are some things as a fan of batman and the character for so many years that uh, for, I think, more adult fans to pick out of it, which we'll talk about. Right. But uh, it's one of those things, you know, if it gets uh, a, a child or a person who is, you know, not normally a Batman fan, or maybe it's the first piece of Batman media and they become a Batman fan, I'm more power. It's all been worth it. Yeah, it's all been worth it. The more the more fans that we can get and the, of the character, um, you know, and the more people that, you know, kind of come into this, however you come into it, it's fine. Yeah. If, if your first experience like us were the films and the animated series, you know, the, those those days will never come back, oh, unfortunately. Yeah. Those are, you know, we'll always ha- we'll always know we were around for the heyday. <laughs> and the, those, those things will endure and survive. But, you know, did you come into it with the films? Did you come into it? You know, with uh, the Schumacher films, did you come into it with the comic books? Did you come into it with, like, Brave and the Bold or something like that? Right. If this is how some kid or person comes into it, I'm happy for that. Yeah, more power to them. Uh, talk about cast a little bit. we got Luke Wilson as Bruce Wayne. How would you feel about Luke Wilson? I, I thought he did a pretty decent job. Yeah, not probably the, the first, weakest yeah, not part the of it. Yeah, first voice I would pick for The Dark Knight. But, yeah, yeah. You know. Probably, for me, probably the weakest voice casting. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying he did a bad job, but I just... I think Batman with a little bit more gravitas. Like, I know you're kind of going with that. You know, in the film, it's kind of Bruce Wayne, Batman. He's kind of like this doting, overprotective father. Right. And maybe you didn't want to go that gravelly, like... Authoritative type voice. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you want to give him a little bit, no, Damien, don't. Like, a little heart to it. Yeah, maybe. exactly. And I think probably why. Uh, what did you feel about the voice actor for Damien? I'm going to butcher his name, but I think it's Jonas Kibrib. I thought that dude was ex, or that kid dude. Yeah, I'm not sure how old he is. The, the photo I saw, he, he looked pretty young. I thought His the voice young man sounds... was excellent. <laughs> he was excellent. Yeah, definitely the the best uh, the best uh, vocal performance in the film for yeah. sure. I actually surprisingly enjoyed James Cromwell. 
as Alfred. Uh, as yeah. Alfred, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I was very surprised by that uh, as well. Uh, the other one here, the other two that I that stood out to me, David Hornsby as the Joker, did pretty well. It's not your traditional Joker. He's not very sinister. He's very... It's more of the prankster, jokester exactly, type Joker. Exactly, exactly. And then we have Brian George. Do you know who Brian George is, Todd? The name is not ringing a bell. Are you familiar with the show Seinfeld? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the character called Babu Bot? He was he was one of Jerry's neighbors that lived in his building. It was like a I think he was from Pakistan, and Jerry got him. Is that that guy? It's, <laughs> okay. He plays the penguin. <laughs> okay. I did not know that until I was looking at the cast list. Like, oh, it's Babu. Okay. It's Babu. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, so I was like, yeah, Brian George is his name. I never knew the gentleman's name, but he is. He plays the. Uh, the uh, the feeble penguin in this yeah very, he's very feeble in this yeah flick. the Mark Cart riding incontinent <laughs> penguin uh, what did you think about the art style uh, you know I could say when we first saw the trailer that was the first thing it kind of took me aback it was like oh this art style you know uh, right Batman kind of looked like a tick <laughs> yeah anybody remember the old uh, cartoon or the comic super of the tick super big with chin the super big chin yeah. but. Uh, you know, as I watched it, I got on into it. It's not something that really bothered me or affected my enjoyment of the film. Yeah, I think it was creative enough to kind of be its own thing. I don't, I don't see it like, like stealing or try to imitate something else too closely. And I don't see it being like, I see there being some effort in it. Like mm-hmm. I see there being some creativity in it compared to some of the other like DC animated stuff we see that's just like cookie cutter bullshit over and over and right, over. Right. Like I see some creativity in it. It's not the 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 best animation I've ever seen. But right. I mean for the tone and for what it is, I think it fits pretty well. Yeah, it works here for what they're doing. Um let's see here. So just some some things I thought were interesting. Um Kind of, kind of take us. Can you think a little bit through the story here in a nutshell, a little bit, Todd? So basically, we're kind of introduced to uh, Batman, uh, Damien, and Alfred. You know, they're it's kind of Christmas Eve. They're kind of, you know, Damien's kind of uh, chasing around a little household cat called Selena. Selena, that's all. And all kinds of mischief and yep. trouble. I think he actually destroys the destroys the HVAC system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we kind of see that Bruce is extremely overprotective of him. You know, uh, treating him with kid gloves. Uh, we find out in the story that when Bruce found out he was going to have a son, he went on, he doubled his efforts and completely wiped out crime in Gotham City. Yeah, you get a little montage of like Arkham Asylum goes to like Arkham, what is it? It's like a daycare? I yeah, think? something like something that. Like it's that, like yeah. it goes from like this dark and gloomy Gotham to like this bright and sunny, like all crime is gone. Like, you know, when he found out he was going to be a father, he didn't want Damien to have to kind of deal with the same problem. So he just wiped out crime, uh, either arrested everyone or the super villains that were there were forced to retire. The film says, right. yeah. So they're kind of sitting around there, and uh, Damien's kind of being a little bit of pestery. So Bruce decides to give him an early Christmas present, and he gives him one of his old utility belts. Right. And, uh, then actually, the bat phone goes off, and he's like, "Well, what is this? This thing ain't ringing you." <laughs> right. It's like a Justice League uh, call. They want him to go up to uh, the North Pole or end up in that area, check out something going on. If there's some kind of anomaly. Yes. He's like, uh, well, can't you get Superman handle this? Can Clark handle this? <laughs> right. But, you know, eventually he, he, he relinquishes and goes over to check out what's going on up there, and it kind of leaves uh, Damien home alone with Alfred. Yeah, and Big that's – mistake. <laughs> I'm glad you said the word home alone. Right. Because that's kind of what it becomes a little bit. Like you, we get uh, we get two burglars, Francine and Terry. So they're going around uh, neighborhoods and they're kind of stealing and, and pilfering from some of the the rich people around. And they end up at Wayne Manor right. um, and break in on Christmas Eve night. And uh, Alfred has been sent out by Damien because uh, Damien's belt has been – taken back by Batman. Right. He thought uh, he wasn't ready for it yet. Exactly. Just based on his, his actions and him wanting to go with him to the North Pole, he, he didn't think he was quite ready for it, so he gives it to Alfred. Alfred puts it in the cupboard on the top shelf, so Damien, you know, uses his his ninja skills to, like, <laughs> to, uh, to get up to retrieve the belt, but he sends Alfred out because... Uh, Alfred uh, asks if he wants some like hot cocoa, his famous like hot cocoa with marshmallows. So to get Alfred out of the house, Damien goes through the cabinets and eats all the marshmallows in the house, <laughs> which sends uh, James Cromwell's Alfred out into Gotham to try to re- you know, retrieve some uh, marshmallows on Christmas Eve. And that uh, allows Damien to be home alone when Francine and Terry bust in. And then it becomes a little like mini Home Alone film for a right. second. Like it's a lot of gags of like, you know, uh, him like you know, tying their shoelaces together 
together and then, you know, like falling over and like, you know, a little plane with shadows and darkness. And then yeah. there, there's a part where he leaves a, a trail of grease on the floor right. and sets it on fire, like sets them all on fire in a grease fire. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's very home alone. Yeah, it's very, very home, home alone, alone stuff. There's a, there's a gag that I like that, um, uh, one, I forget which one of the burglars, um, but I think it's the the girl, and she's like, "There's a whole sh-, like she's looking at the bookshelf in the library. She's like, there's a whole shelf on excavating shell rock from underneath manors, <laughs> and then uh, the other one's like, that's weirdly specific. <laughs> like it's just like little, just little good gags. In it. There's a gag earlier where uh, Bruce shows Damien his chest. And, and he's it's like, all, it's all mangled. All and he's got like a tattoo of like, I think it says Selena with yeah. like an arrow through the heart. And he's got like um. 60s Batman style, like, ba-doom, like, you know, like action uh, verbiage and stuff like that on his chest. Like, they have like this little fist belt thing I do where it's like, na 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 Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah, it, like it becomes, you know, kind of uh, like a little Home Alone stuff. And they, they get away with uh, Damien's belt, so he's kind of hell-bent on getting his belt back. So he, uh, he breaks into the Batcave. I really like how many steps there are. <laughs> to get down to the bat cave, like you got to go like uh, what is it? It's like uh, it's uh, he goes to the wine cellar, turns the little tap on the wine cellar that opens right. up a secret passage. Then there's like a mine cart trail. Then he's got like spelunk down the caves. Like just there's just like a little <laughs> gag of like how many steps there are like to actually get into the bat cave. Uh, we see him looking at the uh, the bat suits. Uh, you see, like the one of them, he looks at the first one. It's like the 1940s serial Batman serial, kind of the droopy ears, the 1940s floppy eared <laughs> Batman. He's like that one looks floppy. Uh, then we get the, uh, the the Schumacher suit that has nipples on yeah. it. He's like that leaves like a little to the imagination or something <laughs> like that. Uh, and then he, you know, eventually finds the suit that uh, Bruce has made for him uh, to to wear in the future. Uh, when we, as we see in a video where uh, Bruce is kind of left to Damien uh, when he comes of age to become Batman potentially, if he, if need be, if crime returns to Gotham, we kind of see a funny little video of Bruce kind of making a message to Damien and saying, you know, here's your suit, I'm dead, you know, this is, you're going to be Batman now basically. And he starts, does he start talking about his mom? And he's like, hey, your mom was a smokehouse. It was a total smoke show. <laughs> it was a smoke show. Yeah, talking yeah. about Talia Agu. was like, hey, your mom was a total smoke show. And he's like, let's fast let's forward through this. this. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, he In the suit, Bruce has built like a AI kind of Jarvis type component into right. the uh, the back symbol on the chest uh, i think it's called what is it? it's bat, bat dad. dad bat dad and like uh he kind of guides damien and kind of kind of serves as like uh you know kind of his ai helper through this i really like the gag where uh he like bat dad just keeps talking while he's like trying to, to do something and he's like can you just mute and he's like are you trying to say you want to mute your dead father <laughs> Like that kind of thing is like, are do I hear you correctly? Do you want to mute your dead father? Like, no, I'm not saying that. Like, there's just a little, you know. There's some good gags. Yeah, here. he gets in the 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 Batmobile. It's got like the Bat for Life license plate, and then you notice the little hanging, uh, little bats, kind of like truck nuts. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, hanging yeah. little batarangs. So like it's just just little stuff like that. He takes off over the bridge, and there's uh, it's uh, Robert Kane and Bill Finger Memorial I Bridge. Saw that, yeah. Did you notice the Bill Finger was capitalized and not the Bob Kane? Oh, I is didn't that a little? That. Is that a is little? That a little bit of a zinger? It should be. Should be. Bob yeah. Kane, bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> contributed nothing much other than the name, folks, if you didn't know. Uh, but Bill Finger kind of made it what it is today. Exactly. Uh, but then uh, let's, who's our, who, who are kind of our rogues gathering in, in this, Todd? Who do we get? So we've got uh, Poison Ivy. We yeah. have uh, the Who looks Joker. like a crack whore. Yes. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry. She just like she looks like a. Uh, you look like a she doesn't look quite herself here. I think all the villains are kind of aged up, aren't they? Like they all, did look older like, versions she, of themselves. She's yeah. not like the. She doesn't have like the red. She's not the femme fatale poison ivy. She's like an old lady kind of white haired poison right. ivy. Like she looks like she's. Uh, been road hard, put away wet. Time. Right. <laughs> We've got Bane, and he's wearing like some square glasses. Like maybe he's having some vision problems in his old age. Yeah, I love the uh, the first time you see Bane. Um, part of Joker's plan is, is to somehow get you know he to Damien. He knows Damien's going to come for his belt and want it. Like so, he has Bane and uh, dress up as Santa, and Poison Ivy dresses up like an elf, and. Uh, Damien sits on Bane's lap and like that's the first time you see Bane is like dressed up as Santa at first I didn't know who it was yeah. and I'm like you get Santa Bane 
And I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> Santa Bay, <laughs> leave a present under the tree. You're like, you know. So I fucking sit there thinking, <laughs> singing Santa Bane to wow. myself as I slowly slipped into madness. Uh, who else we got? Uh, we got an extremely elderly looking penguin. <laughs> yeah, like I said, an enfeeble uh, uh, kind of rascal scooter riding penguin. Yeah. Uh, who else are we missing? Oh, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Talk about yes. Mr. Freeze. Uh, he's uh, up at the North Pole. He kind of first has an encounter with Batman up there. Batman learns that he's the rogues is trying to distract him from what's going on in Gotham. Yeah, trying the, to get crime back in the city. Exactly. The anomaly was just an excuse to get him out of Gotham while they enacted their plan. The Mr. Freeze is definitely a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger parody. He's spouting a lot of those old Batman and Robin Arnold lines. Yeah. Uh, tonight's forecast, the freeze is coming. <laughs> and he does the tonight hell freezes over. Yeah. Like He does a lot of that. He's, he's, he's definitely a parody of the, uh, the Schwarzenegger, uh, Schwarzenegger Mr. Freeze. Uh, there's a portion where like the animation kind of switches to like black and white. Do you remember that when Damien is kind of like in the city and he's being chased? I think he's in an alley and somebody's approaching him. It turns out yes. to be Alfred. Yeah, 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 exactly. And there's like uh, there's just little stuff. There's a you know basically I guess the the plan is the Joker eventually has like is to uh, it becomes kind of the Grinch the how the Joker stole Christmas right right you know kind of thing. He takes all the presents in Gotham. Uh, you kind of see them in the it's like a, a big kind of glass snow globe. I guess they're kind of in. What it was yeah. And uh, they kind of invite Damien up and they're like you know kind of join us. We've here's your belt, but we've upgraded it with, with a bunch of explosives and ninja stars and a bunch of lethal lethal <laughs> shit deadly shit take it and join us like you know that kind of stuff and uh it kind of becomes like a little bit of you know the joker kind of stole christmas a little bit there right. there's a gag where i think um robin or not robin but damien um is kind of uh imagining what could happen if all this stuff and, and the one i think it was probably the thing that made me kind of genuinely crack up the most he's like imagining Maybe it's not even him. Maybe it's Bruce. It's Bruce imagining what's happening in Gotham while he's stuck there. And he sees, like, Damien, like, in trouble. He sees the the manor on fire. And he sees Alfred, um, like, trying to get to Damien, like, on this, like, little plank of wood. And he's like, you know, Master Damien, I'll see you in the promised land. And he, like, <laughs> crashes through and dies. Like, I don't know. It's just, like, funny little stuff. I, right. I, I got to admit. Um uh, just you know, kind of cute little little stuff. Just little stuff that kind of surprised me as I was, um, you know, kind of going through it. The the problem with it to me is too long. Yeah, it was a little long for what it is. You could cut some of that down for sure. It could have been an hour. It could have been forty five minutes to an hour, and I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. It does drag in that early part. Right, there's a little bit too much of staying around Wayne Manor, and a little too much of like, man, I want to be a superhero. Like, there's right. a little too much of that. Like, yeah. we get it. Let's get into some of the the better and the funnier stuff as we go on. That's my biggest problem with it. I'm on board with the animation. The, the, you know, the kind of the voice acting, all that stuff, pretty good. The gags, there was enough for me as an adult Batman fan to kind of pick out and get a little chuckle out of. I think if you if you have young kids, for sure, I think this will be a good introduction for, for them or something if they're already a fan of Batman. Definitely put oh, this yeah. on for them and kill 90 minutes and save yourself, a, you know, have your little, yourself a little bit of 90 minutes of free time. Right. But, like, yeah, that's my biggest problem. It's a little, it's a little too long for what it is. Um... Tell us about the very ending, Todd. So our uh, our uh, our big factory fight, and then uh, also, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Damien manages to uh, shatter the snow globe, and they wind up in a factory setting. Yeah, it's kind of like an Ace Chemicals, kind of like an Ace Chemicals type setting, and uh, he's battling with uh, Poison Ivy, the Joker, and Bane, and the Penguin is there as well too. Yep. yep. And, and Mr. Freeze eventually. And Mr. Freeze eventually shows back up because who shows back up also? But the tick. Damien's dad. No, Batman, <laughs> not the tick. Uh, yeah, and they the, sort of have a little moment, and you know, they have a little bonding moment where Bruce kind of realizes he sees Damien in action. And he's like, you know what? This is my son. He he can't handle this stuff. Exactly. He can't do this. Exactly. Yeah, they have a they have a punch up in the factory. Uh, it ends up knocking most of them into a big vat of like peppermint candy looking thing. It's like thing. peppermint candy stuff. Yeah. Batman has a little gag when the Joker falls into it. It's like how many times is he gonna fall into that stuff? <laughs> like you know, he should bring like a snorkel with him or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and pretty much the last little part of the film is uh, you know they the Damien and Bruce are returning all the toys back to the kids and the presents back to the families of Gotham, and uh, Damien. And starts to have a little bit of a tinge of of uh, kind of uh, 
Little, feeling sorry for yeah, the Joker. Exactly. Feeling sorry for the Joker a little bit. So uh, they get the Joker. They get Commissioner Gordon to bring the Joker down to like a local diner, and they all have a little uh, little meal together. A little meal together, and Joker's kind of singing uh, Batman Smells. And he kind of ends it with like, you know, something like, oh, all my friends are here. And then the last line is Batman's like, I'm not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our last line of the film. I'm, I'm not your friend. I'm not your friend. Uh, like, it's, just, it's good stuff, It is actually. good stuff. It is it is pretty good stuff. Like I said, it's it's a little too long uh, in the early parts of it. It could, it could get going a little bit faster. The animation is, is really good. I think uh, the director of this uh, is Mike Roth. I don't think I think this is his first time directing any animation. Okay. He wrote for uh, the show Camp Laszlo and regular show, which I've seen very little of. Right, but I know they're super super popular. But I mean, I think all in all, I think it's surprising. It's it, it's you know kind of a surprising little cute little Batman project. Yeah, may not be for everybody. It may not be for adults. If you're looking for Poison Eye, well, not Poison Eye, but uh, uh, Harley Quinn type jokes and mature jokes and yeah, stuff. That's not here. This is not for you. Like, you know, this, you might find something else, but if you're looking for that, this is not that. This is not a dark take. This is, this is for, you know, mostly for children, for, for uh, younger Batman fans, but it's a good little Christmas. You know, a little Christmas Batman tale. And I'm a sucker for Christmas things, you know, for right, things set in right. Christmas time and around snow. I'm a sucker for that. So, uh, ready to move on to our review, Todd? Yeah, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention that I picked up on. Uh, there was this the scene where I think it's right after Bruce reveals his gnarly chest, and they're mm-hmm. kind of walking back upstairs. And I think Damien's kind of naming over like bat gadgets or something. And at one point, he says, "Ice skates." Did you catch yes. that? And Bruce ice is like, "Ice skates? That's ridiculous." Yeah, there's another <laughs> one. I think he. I think when he asked Bat Dad for. Um, doesn't he have some type of device where they can listen in and, and uh, hear and see everybody in Gotham? Oh, yeah, a lot of the Dark Knight. Dark Knight, yeah. exactly, yeah. I mean, there's a few, yeah. like I said, there's a lot of little clever nods. I don't remember nods. The, the exact exchange, but there was something with the penguin. It might have been the Damien and the penguin or something, but the, the penguin, the end of his line was like, well, know. you know, my dad pushed me in a sewer or something. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, yeah, something about his parents. It's like, but I can't forgive him for, like, putting my bassinet in the sewer. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, oh, just, the Batman returned. There's a lot of little call backs to Batman proper uh, back in the day. I liked it. Yeah, I mean, there's just enough there if you're a, a, a long-time Batman fan, an adult Batman fan, that if you're watching it alone like we were, <laughs> two sad old men. Or if you're watching with your children and yeah. your family, there's enough for you to kind of pick out while they enjoy some of the – the, the, the stuff that, you know, is there meant for them while you kind of pick out some of the stuff that we kind of picked out as well. Um, so any other final thoughts, Todd, or uh, go into your review score for Merry Little Batman? Uh, you know, this is an example of one of those, uh, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, when I first saw the trailer for this, I was like, my God, this, what is this? Yeah. And, you know, I watched it and I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, uh, like you say, it runs a little bit too long. You know, maybe this type of animation and type of storytelling isn't for everyone. Uh, but I actually enjoyed watching this. Yeah. I would definitely give it, uh, I would say, uh, seven little Damien uh, utility belts, which would be good on our scale. Gotcha. Yeah, same for me. Like I said, it's a little bit too long. Animation is fine. Cute little Batman Christmas tale. Like I said, if you have ch- children, it's perfect for them. If you're already subscribing to Amazon Prime, uh, go ahead and give it a watch. Like I said, I wouldn't make it a priority on your list if you've got a lot to go through, but if you've got some extra time on your hands and you're a Batman fan and you have or you have little ones that are Batman fans, give it a watch. If you're not subscribed to Amazon Prime, would I say go out and like specifically subscribe to Amazon Prime for this? No. I wouldn't say go and specifically for this, but if you're interested in the rest of their catalog and this looks interesting, why not? Uh, for me, I give Mary ba- uh, little, 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 little. <laughs> I give Mary Little Batman a seven out of ten, which ranks it as good as well. Yeah, and just to reiterate something we said a few times earlier, if this leads a child, any child, to Batman, it's all worth it. Exactly. So, Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. Uh, we are at Tal Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tal Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at talcapespod at gmail.com. Also, if you're so obliged, leaving us a five-star review in your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Be on the lookout for this week's Popcorn Mumbles. We'll be talking about the 2005 film, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Tal Capes will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys.